Welcome to the first edition of our Genomics Applications and Methods bite-sized learning series at Illumina. This series is aimed at providing our customers a focused educational experience on different aspects of next generation sequencing and the associated worlds. My name is Matt Angel and I am an executive sequencing specialist here at Illumina. Today, we will be discussing considerations as to properly choose an amplicon or enrichment method for targeted resequencing applications. We will first provide a brief overview of what is a sequencing read, then discuss what is targeted resequencing and why it is important. We will next move on to briefly discussing the workflows of each, discuss unique attributes of both methods, and finally discuss considerations for choosing amplicon or enrichment. First, let's start with why would you choose NGS over other methods such as PCR or Sanger sequencing. The introduction of next generation sequencing in the early 2000s revolutionized the genomics industry by allowing users to greatly increase their scale and scope of their experiments. Next generation sequencing has enabled detection of variants that would be more expensive or more challenging for identification via PCR or Sanger sequencing. Now, onto a few basics of NGS. One, what is a sequencing read? And two, how do these reads align to the reference genome in a targeted resequencing experiment? There are two sequencing read types, single end sequencing and paired end sequencing. Single end sequencing involves sequencing DNA fragments from one direction to the other. It's useful for some applications such as small RNA sequencing and can be fast and economical option. With paired end sequencing, once a DNA fragment is read from one direction, the process starts again in the opposite direction. In addition to producing twice the number of sequencing reads, this method enables more accurate read alignment and detection of structural rearrangements. Paired end sequencing is typically used for targeted enrichment applications. With targeted resequencing, a subset of genes or target regions are amplified or enriched before sequencing, efficiently and cost-effectively focusing the power of NGS. Targeted resequencing offers several significant advantages. It enables deeper sequencing, which allows greater confidence over Sanger sequencing for calling variants or low-frequency alleles in a given region of interest. When speed is critical to success, Targeted resequencing can also provide fast turnaround times, higher multiplexing capacity, lower data analysis requirements, and the ability to sequence anywhere from a small number of genes to the entire coding region or exome. Targeted resequencing can reveal variants such as low frequency variants that would be more expensive or more challenging to identify with PCR or Sanger sequencing. The ability to detect low frequency variants can enable the identification of novel functional variants, facilitate biomarker discovery, or lead to the identification of clinically relevant targets for translational research. Targeted resequencing is particularly useful for the discovery of somatic variation in complex samples such as cancerous tumors mixed with germline DNA. Whether performing cancer studies, microbial genomics, agrogenomics, or molecular epidemiology, researchers can target regions of the genome relevant to their specific interests. The image on the left represents the depth of coverage that one can achieve from the different types of targeted resequencing compared to whole genome sequencing. For a small portion of the genome, an amplicon panel can generate as much as 5,000 X coverage the same region may receive 200x coverage by exome sequencing and 30x coverage from whole genome sequencing. Therefore, if one can hone down on the regions of the genome that you're interested in and perform targeted sequencing, even very rare variants can be detected with sensitivity because of the coverage achieved. This deep level of sequencing may be necessary for applications such as somatic variation detection and tumor analysis, or analyzing a blood sample for circulating tumor DNA. With the declining cost of sequencing overall and improvements in targeted resequencing methods, targeted resequencing is accelerating the pace of research and driving high impact publications. From 2004 to 2018, the number of publications with targeted resequencing has grown from a handful of studies to over 800 publications. 
Here we are looking at the continuum of sequencing from single site interrogation up to whole genome sequencing. Obviously, whole genome sequencing offers the highest level of discovery power, but also has the highest cost associated with a single sample. Targeted resequencing offers a cost-effective and scalable solution while still maintaining the purpose of the assay, whether that be the discovery with exome sequencing or variant screening in a small subset of genes. Here are example schematics of the two workflows we will be discussing today. On the left, we feature an example of an amplicon-based workflow. Amplicon-based workflows are straightforward and simple workflows which involve designing primers to amplify specific regions of the genome. This methodology can be applied to both DNA and RNA. When working with RNA, you would first create a cDNA library via reverse transcription and then proceed with the same workflow as with DNA. The final library results in PCR amplicons that are ready to be sequenced. This methodology simultaneously incorporates the library preparation method with target enrichment or amplification. On the right-hand side, we feature an example of an enrichment-based workflow. The target enrichment-based workflows are typically more advanced than amplicon-based workflows. This technique can be applied to DNA and RNA as well. In a target enrichment-based workflow, you recreate a library which is your genomic DNA or cDNA with appropriate sequencing motifs, which are sequencing adapters, sequencing primers, and sample indexes added to each DNA fragment. Once you've constructed this library, you would be set for whole genome sequencing, but we want to only enrich for the targets or genes we are interested in sequencing. So we move forward with the enrichment step. In this step, we utilize probes that have been modified to incorporate biotin. These probes have been designed specifically to hybridize to their targets or regions of the genome you wish to capture. Once the hybridization reaction occurs, you then capture the DNA molecules by streptavidin magnetic beads, which bind to the biotin molecules attached to the DNA probes. You wash away any unbound DNA library and dilute the captured DNA from the bead and proceed to sequencing. Let's discuss what methods may be right for you and your research goals. First off, let's discuss the pros of an enrichment or hybrid capture solution. First and foremost, the class of variants you are looking for will usually dictate the methodology you choose to utilize. Enrichment is better suited for detection of copy number variations, splicing variants, and de novo discovery due to the inherent nature of the design process and limitations of amplicon enrichment, mainly due to the PCR process. Differentiation of PCR duplicates from true unique reads is challenging with amplicon sequencing. Enrichment offers the ability to detect novel structural variants, such as novel gene fusions, since enrichment assays do not require you to design enrichment probes to each partner gene for fusion detection. With amplicon enrichment, you would need to design specific primers around each unique breakpoint to detect the fusions, therefore limiting novel fusion detection. Enrichment is also typically suited for larger targeted panels. For example, a comprehensive genomic profiling panel for oncology or exome sequencing. Enrichment is better suited due to the ability of having all enrichment probes in a single tube or reaction and not having to worry about cross-reactivity or non-specific amplification like you would with amplicon enrichments. Enrichment is also better at lowering the risk of allelic dropouts because there's no risk of primer dropouts with enrichment. An enrichment workflow may offer a more streamlined process in terms of sample inputs. Some enrichment library prep methods, such as the Illumina DNA prep with enrichment, allow for a direct input from whole blood, saliva, and dry blood spots without having to perform genomic DNA extraction. Enrichment also has the benefit of no primer cross-reactivity or nonspecific amplification in challenging regions of the genome. This can also reduce the cost associated with a targeted resequencing experiment due to the reduced number of primer pools required for the assay. Now, Let's discuss why you might choose an amplicon approach to targeted resequencing. 
One factor is that Amplicon workflows lend themselves to the new to NGS users for several factors. One being lower capital equipment costs and the methods are historically easier and faster than enrichment or hybrid capture methods. Another factor can be the low input requirement. Typically Amplicon panels offer users success with lower input amounts down to one nanogram. Amplicon panels also enable smaller targeted panels. For example, you may only want to interrogate five to 10 genes. Here, an Amplicon approach would be more effective because of the specificity of the amplification over the off-target effects you would encounter with an enrichment method, thus reducing your sequencing costs per sample, as well as overcoming possible minimum probe requirements when using an enrichment method. Another reason for possibly choosing Amplicon over enrichment could be the flexibility in library preparation. With enrichment methods, typically there is a multiplex enrichment step, which could require you to run up to 12 samples or libraries in a single hybridization, thus driving up costs. Amplicon methods do not use a multiplex method of enrichment. Therefore, you can create libraries with greater flexibility. Due to the specificity of the PCR primers, Amplicon enrichment typically has a higher on-target rate if stringency in the primer design is maintained. Also, there is no need to fragment the DNA before beginning the workflow. There are considerations for making the choice for utilizing Amplicon or enrichment in your targeted resequencing experiment. As previously mentioned, variant classes should be the number one consideration when choosing Amplicon versus enrichment. Certain variant classes are better defined utilizing one technology over the other, such as copy number variation and low frequency somatic variations. A second consideration would be where is your nucleic acid coming from and how much can you get from that source? You may be working with a whole blood sample where you would typically get sufficient DNA or RNA for an NGS-based assay, or you could be working with a small formal infix paraffin embedded sample where you can only get a very limited amount of nucleic acid. A third consideration would be, what is the size of the region you are attempting to enrich? For example, if you are only targeting several genes, an Amplicon methodology may be more appropriate than enrichment. Whereas if you are targeting the exome, enrichment would more than likely be the best option. Sequencing metrics such as on target percentage and uniformity are often considerations when choosing between the two techniques. Enrichment based methodologies typically produce more off target sequence due to probe design and cross hybridization with adapter sequences, but often offer higher uniformity rates in comparison to Amplicon sequencing due to Amplicon dropout and PCR bias in amplifying multiple targets in a single reaction. Costs should also be a consideration. Depending upon several factors, such as target size, depth of sequencing required, costs can be drastically different for library preparation and sequencing required. And one final consideration should be your comfort level and experience with NGS or other molecular assays. Typically, Amplicon workflows are shorter and require less hands-on time than enrichment workflows. With Amplicon-based workflows, you are simultaneously performing library prep and enriching your target. Whereas with an enrichment-based approach, you create your library and then perform enrichment. However, there are new to NGS labs that do choose to go with an enrichment methodology because the application requirements drive the need. For example, comprehensive genomic profiling of solid tumors. We have a few resources on this topic for your reference. Links to these resources can be found below in the video description. Thank you for viewing this video, and I hope it better prepares you to dive into your targeted resequencing experiments. As always, Illumina is here to help through our many channels. Have a great day.